Good evening, children. Good evening, Deepthi. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, Deepthi, I've shared my screen. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Good. So we all know uh, we had one session of uh, lines and angles. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, the last class in April. Was. No, I shared the recording with you, no? Yeah, no, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't really affect uh, today's class. We'll see. All right, so we've already had session one of lines and angles wherein you had the introduction to this chapter. We understood the different pairs of angles uh, like um, linear pair, supplementary angles, complementary angles, adjacent angles, vertically opposite angles. All right. OK, now we'll take up some numerical situations based on these angles. We'll use their properties uh, to find their measures. Right. This is our first question. Find the measure of angle AOC. Okay. Now you see AOB is a straight line. AOB, if it is not a straight line, it will be mentioned. OK, so it is a straight line. If it's not a straight line, something in the question will tell you that it is not a straight line. A O B is a straight line. OK, and you can see the ray O C on it. Ray O C stands on the line A O B. Clear? Angle A O C and angle B O C are called dash angles. What angles? Angle AOC and angle BOC are called? You can give you can give different names. Angle AOC and BOC are called? They're called adjacent angles. They're called adjacent angles, and because the adjacent angles are on a straight line, they form a linear pair. They form a linear pair, and linear pair of angles are supplementary. I'll repeat, the two angles, angle AOC and angle BOC, are adjacent angles. Why? Because they have a common vertex O, they have a common arm OC and their non common arms OA and OB lie on the opposite sides, actually, either sides of the common arm OC. Let's recall that. Looks like uh, we've forgotten. It's more than it's about two months, right? Mm -hmm. since, we, since we had the introduction to this chapter. So let me just tell you this. Yeah, come with your question. You don't have to be so formal. Yeah. yeah. Mom, have you finished fractions in decimal chapter? Like it's over, right? Yes, yes, it's done. Yes. Because last class you gave us like few questions and we'll be uh, discussing. Uh, on WhatsApp, Deepthi. Deepthi on yeah, WhatsApp, yeah. okay? Yeah. Mom, it's not related to the integers thing. Last class on fractions and decimals, you gave us few questions and you told us that. This class will be discussing the answers. No, no, the, uh, yesterday's image you wouldn't have completed, no, because some of us had school today. So we'll see that in the next class. Okay. Okay. So angle AOC will, we'll just discuss about these two angles angle AOC and angle BOC. Okay. Now, common vertex. Which is the common vertex? Tell me. Which is the common vertex? O. Oh. Now tell me the two arms of angle AOC. Which are the two arms of angle AOC? OC and AOC. AOC. AOC is here. AOC. 
which are the two arms of angle AOC? OA and OC. This is the angle, right? Angle AOC. This is the angle. This is angle AOC. The two arms of the angle are OA and OC. Or OC and OA. What about the arms of angle BOC? BOC. So this is how we see BOC in the figure. OB and OB and OC. OB and OC. Now, do these two angles have a common arm? These are the two arms of this angle. These are the two arms of this angle. Do these two angles have a common arm? Which is the common arm? OC. OC is the common arm. So common arm, common arm, OC. So, we, so this is the common arm, OC. Which are the non-common arms? OB and OA. OB and OA. And see OB and OA, they lie on either sides, right? OB and OA, they lie on either side of the common arm. This is the common arm. OB lies on, uh, by this figure, lies to the right side of the common arm. OC is the common arm. The non-common arm OB lies to the right of the common arm OC. And uh, the non-common arm OA lies to the left of the common arm OC. So they lie on either sides. They are not on the same side. See, same side meaning like this. So supposing this is the common arm and the remaining two arms are like this. They lie on the same side. Supposing this is the common arm and these two are the non-common arms. Suppose this is the common arm and these two are the non-common arms. So you see that the non-common arms, they lie on the same side of the common arm. But that's not the case here, right? The non-common arms lie on either sides of the common arm. So if these three conditions are satisfied, then the two angles are adjacent angles. What are the three conditions? Two angles are said to be adjacent angles if they have a common vertex, a common arm, and their non-common arms lie on either sides of the common arm. Either sides, not on the same. Either sides mean not, not on the same side. So, exactly. Now, see, this one is also now supposing, supposing this is the common arm. Uh, these are also either sides of the common arm. Supposing this is the common arm. In this figure, if this is the common arm, then these two non-common arms are on either sides. One is above, one is below. That's a third rule. That's a third rule. Now, if the non-common arms, if the non-common arms are opposite rays, that is, they go uh, opposite to each other. Now, in this figure, in this figure, because uh, AOB is a straight line, because AOB is a straight line in this figure, and the non-common arms OB and uh, OA, they go opposite to each other. They are opposite to each other because it's a straight line. So these adjacent angles also are also called linear pair of angles. Linear pair of angles. Linear because they lie on a straight line. Linear because they lie on a straight line. Can you see it again? Name the two angles in this figure. Angle AOC and angle BOC. Okay, these are the two angles. Now let's mention. Let's uh, talk about the common arm, or let's. Which are the arms of these two angles? Which are the arms of these two angles? The arms of angle AOC are OA and OC. The arms of angle BOC are OB and OC. Uh, sorry, OB and OC, right? Correct? Yeah. So now, do they have a common arm? Do the two angles have a common arm? Yeah, OC is the common arm. OC is the common arm. 
common noun OC. Now, so these two are the non common nouns. OA and OB are the non common nouns. In this figure, how are the non common nouns presented in this figure? The non common <laughs> nouns OA and OB, how are they presented? They lie on either side. They don't lie on the same side of the common noun. They lie on opposite sides of the common noun. So they lie on either side of the common noun. So all the three conditions are satisfied for two angles to be called adjacent angles. Two angles are said to be adjacent angles if they have a common vertex. So here the common vertex is O. They have a common arm. Here the common arm is OC. And the non-common arms here OA and OB. They lie on either sides of the common arm. Then the two angles. So here angle AOC and angle BOC are called adjacent angles. Now adjacent angles form a linear pair. Adjacent, all adjacent angles need not form a linear pair. But every linear pair is, uh, can be called adjacent angles. If two angles are adjacent angles, if two angles are adjacent angles, you need to go back to the video because it's all in detail there. I'm just recalling because it's two months since we took the introduction. So you can just visit the video and get it back. Get all the, uh, you know, uh, concepts in the introduction back. Yeah, so here the adjacent angles form a linear pair because AOB is a straight line. AOB is a straight line. And a straight line meaning the non-common arms will go opposite to each other. See, one non-common arm goes like this, OB. The other one goes exactly in the opposite direction like this. Then the adjacent angles form a linear pair. Form a linear pair. So here in this figure, angle AOC and angle BOC form a linear pair. They are adjacent angles. Because they satisfy all the three. Only if the angles are adjacent, angle, uh, adjacent angles, they can form a linear pair. All adjacent angles need not form a linear pair. Okay, we, so we, when we take up different situations, we'll understand. Let me not shove everything into your mind now. So, <clears throat> so here do we understand that angle AOC and angle BOC are adjacent angles? They also form a linear pair. Linear pair of angles are supplementary. That means the two angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so take down the figure. I'll work and then explain. Deeti, please write down the question. And all of you must take the answer as you see on the board or on the screen. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry to disturb you. Now look at the board. Deeply, please stop writing. Listen to me. <clears throat> so see you. Yeah. Angle AOC, Santosh. Angle AOC and angle BOC form a linear pair. All right. Next. Therefore, angle AOC plus angle BOC is equal to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. The sum of the two angles will be equal to 180 degrees. So now what is the measure or what is the expression given for angle AOC? 9x plus 24. What is the expression given for angle BOC? 3x plus 12. So 9x plus 24 plus 3x plus 12 is equal to 180. Now how do we simplify this? This is called an equation in one variable x. It's an equation because we have this equal to sign here. We have the equality sign here. So this is called an equation. You can see the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. All right. Now this is called a equation, a simple equation in one variable x. 
because you'll have to solve this equation and find the value of x. What are, you, what are we going to do with this equation? See, you should have some aim, no? What's the goal? What are you going to do with this equation? We're going to solve this simple equation in, in this variable x to find the value of x. All right? It's a simple equation, right? Why is it an equation? Because we see the equality sign. So it's an equation. It's a simple equation. And what's the variable here? X. And what's our aim? To find, to solve and find the value of X. So how do we, uh, how do we find the value of X? For that, you will have to separate the X terms and the constants. You will have to separate the X terms and the constants. You need to have the X term on the left hand side and the constant on the right hand side. Simplify, simplify, and then you will have only one X term and one constant in this situation. You will have only one X term. After simplifying, you will have only one X term and one constant. You must have the X term on the left hand side and take the constant to the right hand side. Okay, so. At the end of it, it should be like the X term is on the LHS and the constant is on the RHS. And then we continue in one more step, you'll find the value of X. Now see this, open the bracket first, 9X plus 24. Now, before the bracket, if there's a plus sign, simply write the terms as you see in, in the bracket. We'll see what when there's a minus sign. See, this is the bracket. There is a plus sign preceding the bracket, right? You see a plus sign here. So this plus sign is like very gentle. It does not disturb anybody inside the bracket. If it's a minus sign outside the bracket, then it affects. Yeah, yeah. So then in that it affects the terms in the bracket in a sense. We'll see that later. We'll see that later. So now uh, before the bracket, we have a plus sign. That's not going to affect anything. Uh, affect the signs of the terms inside the bracket. So just write them as you see, plus 3x plus 12. Is that fine? Is equal to 180. Is it good so far? Okay, now, 9x, this is optional step. This is optional, but I, I just want to show. 9x plus 3x. See, we are not, 9x is on the left-hand side. 3x is also on the left-hand side only. Are we just rearranging? Like now, say, uh, Pranava wants to sit, Beside, she wants to sit in the middle. So she'll stay on the same bench, but she'll just shift from that position to this position, but she's on the same bench. Right? So we 3x is just coming next to 9x, but on the same side. So don't change the sign on anything. 9x plus 3x plus 24 plus 12 is equal to 180. So what are we doing? We're just writing the x terms together and the constants together. 9x plus 3, they're all on the, still on the same side. You can see these four terms, they're on the left-hand side, right? One second. They're all on the left-hand side, right? See, you can see they're on the left-hand side only here also. We have, not, we have not changed their position. We have not taken them to the right-hand side. So you know, when you take them to the right-hand side, or we have to change their signs. They're just rearranging the terms on the same side. That's what we've done. What have we done now? We've just rearranged, rearranged the terms on the same side. The terms are on the left-hand side. We're just rearranging them. Like five of you sitting that bench, you, you continue to sit on the same bench, but you just rearrange yourself. You come to this and you go to that end and like that. So what is now? These two are called like terms. When we add or subtract like terms, the answer is also a like term. When we add or subtract like terms, the resultant is also a like term. So 9x, 3x, the answer is x only. The answer will be in x. Sir. What is 9 plus 3? 12. 12x. x, x, x. Y, y, y. When you add or subtract, when you add or subtract, like terms, the result is also a like term. So 9x, 3x, answer also will be in x only. How many x terms you have? Supposing you have 9x, 3x, 5x, uh, 10x, 20x, how many ever x terms you have? If you have to add them, x, 
9 plus 3, 12. 12 plus 5, 17. 17 plus 30, 47. See, all are like terms. They're all X terms only. Remember that. This is the rule. When you add or subtract like terms, the result is also a like term. And like terms is where it's like any with a variable, right? Correct. No, they should, the variable should be the same. Now, yes. these are unlike terms. Now, 9x and 3y, they are unlike terms. Unlike terms because the variable is different. Oh, okay. In, for that matter, 9x and 9x square are also unlike terms because this is x, this is x square. The variable should read exactly the same. How do you read this? X. How do you read this one? X square. No, the sound is different. Then uh, they are not like terms. When you read the variable or the variables, uh, see, now supposing 9abc and 8cba, uh, the arrangement can be different. See, a, b, c. A, B, C. They are like terms. This is fine. A, B, C. A, B, C. Yeah, they are like terms. The answer is 9 to the 17. You can write A, B, C. Or you can write C, B, A. Or you can say B, A, C. All fine. Yeah. Not change. Okay, so 9 plus 3, 12, 12x plus 24 and 12 is 36 is equal to 180. Okay, now what? Uh, so, where are we now? Oh, we have completely simplified the left hand side. Now, you cannot add 12x and 36 because they're unlike. This is 12, the variable here is x. Sir. This is just a constant 36. You cannot add them because they're not like terms. 12x and 36, they're not like terms. So you cannot add or subtract them. You can add or subtract only like terms. So at this point, we have simplified the left hand side completely. We had two x terms. We simplified. That is, we added them. And then we had two constants, 24 and 12. So 24 plus 12 is 36. Now we can do nothing more with the left hand side. Nothing more we can do with the left hand side. At this point, you'll have to separate the uh, X term and the constant. So what you do, write 12 X on the same side. In fact, I'll just tell you like this. See, write 12 X, 12 X as it is, put this equal to sign as it is, write 180 as it is. Because the constant should be on the RHS. It's already 180 is a constant. It's already on the RHS. 12x is the x term. We want to have that on the left hand side. What did we what did we understand? X term should be on the left hand side and the constant should be on the right hand side. So this 12x is already on the left hand side. Constant is on the right hand side, 180. But there's one more constant 36, which is on the left hand side. So we need to take that to the right hand side. So when this plus 36 is transposed, it becomes minus 36. Write that again. Twelve x as it is is equal to one eighty as it is. This plus thirty six should go to the other side, so it becomes minus thirty six. You don't have to leave a gap here. I'm just writing it that way for me to explain better. So twelve x is equal to one eighty minus thirty six. 12x is equal to what is 180 minus 36? 180 minus 30 is 150, 144. Now, plus 36 goes to the other side as minus 36. Now, what is it? Now we have to separate x from 12. Now we have to separate x because we have to find the value of x. So we have to separate x from 12. Now, what is the connection between? Yeah, what's the connection between 12 and x? Multiplication. 12 into x. So when you transpose the operation, you have to use the opposite operation. Okay, 
addition subtraction are opposite operations multiplication and division are opposite operations addition subtraction opposite operations multiplication division opposite operations when you transpose you need to write the you need to use the opposite operation so here it was plus 36 opposite operation minus 36 now what is the relation between uh, 12 and x multiplication 12 into x it is so when you take 12 to the other side it will be x is equal to see here one see here write the remaining things x is equal to 144 see you have to take you have to separate 12 right don't write the 12 don't write 12 write the remaining things x is equal to 144 write the remaining things x is equal to 144 now uh, it is into 12 so on the other side it will go for division so it will be divided by 12 you can write it like this also if you want divided by 12 into 12 will be divided by 12 on the other side or you can directly use the by symbol like this and 144 by 12 yes yeah, correct. So x is equal to 12. On simplifying, 12, 12 are 144. So x is 12. So we found the value of x. All right. Now, what is the question? Find the measure of angle AOC. The question is not find x. Sir. Find the measure of angle AOC. Therefore, angle AOC is equal to 9x plus 24. That is equal to 9 into 12 plus 24. So 9 12, uh, 9 12 is a 108 plus 24, which is equal to 2 1 carried over 3 132. So the measure of angle AOC is equal to 132 degrees. All right. Yeah. Please start working. Yeah. You can now write Deepthi. As you write, children, any questions, please ask me. So, like all the steps we did until that for angle AOC is to find what x is, right? Like yeah. Here we found the value of x. The question is to find, we have to find x to find angle AOC. Session one, uh, meeting recording of uh, lines and angles, I'll share. Please watch it before the next class. Ready.
Ja, dann. Finish writing. Deepthi, completed. Yeah, let's we'll discuss this. One of the angles in a linear pair is given. Okay, what is the measure of the uh, other angles in each linear pair? Now we'll just discuss this. In A, B, C, and D, they are not the choices. It's not an MCQ. A, B, C, D are four different questions. So one. One of the angles in a linear pair is given. One of the angles in a linear pair is given. What is the measure of the other angles in each linear pair? Okay, so linear pair of angles are supplementary. Linear pair of angles are supplementary because they lie on a straight line. What do we mean by linear pair? Pair meaning two angles. Linear is okay. All right. So if one angle is 91 degrees, the other angle will be 180 minus 91, 89 degrees. Because linear pair of angles are supplementary, right? So if one angle is 91 degrees, what are supplementary angles? The sum of the two angles should be 180 degrees. Complementary angles, the sum of the two angles should be 90 degrees. 180 minus the given angle is the other angle. So the answers will be 180 minus 91, 180 minus 126, 180 minus 44, and 180 minus 39. All right? Yeah. You can. Okay, right on. We'll quickly uh, complete it. Ma'am, can you hear me? Ma'am? Yeah? Ma'am, my net is down. Like, I don't oh. have net. So, I got disconnected in the middle. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Ma'am, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, after the first question, which is, this is the second question, right? This one, yes, yes. Yes, my right. Finished? Yeah. Finished, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So this is homework. Oh, but I think we have to do it here because it has plus and minus the expression. Okay. All right. Find the measures of the two angles that form a linear pair if their measures are as given. So it's given that uh, in each of the questions A and B, the two angles form a linear pair. There are two questions, A and B. And uh, you, you see two expressions. In each question, you see two expressions. This expression uh, represents one angle. This expression represents another angle. Similarly, in the other question, this is one angle. This is the other angle. All right. Now, it's given that these two angles, they form a linear pair. These two angles, they form a linear pair. Given that, you should find the measures of the two angles. Find the measures of the two angles. Measures meaning like, the numerical value, 50 degrees and 130 degrees, 120 and 60. So find the numerical value. Is that fine? Is the question understood? Okay, so I think second one way you can take it as homework. We'll do the first one together in the class. Yeah, now we'll do it together first. Listen to me. Okay, so. Uh, 4A, the two angles are, the two angles, they form a linear pair. Okay, so that means that sum will be equal to 180 degrees. So 4A minus 1 plus 5A plus 10 is equal to 180 degrees. Because, because linear pair of angles are supplementary are supplementary. 4A minus 1 plus 5A plus 10 is equal to 180 because linear pair of angles are supplementary. Understand? Then open the bracket. 4A minus 1. And before this bracket, there's a plus sign. And plus sign does not affect the sign of any term inside the bracket. So as it is, plus 5A plus 10 as it is, is equal to 180. Now we'll rearrange the terms on the left-hand side. 4A plus 5A. They're like terms. They're like terms, 4A and 5A. We are just rearranging. We are not transposing. Transposing is moving a term from one side to the other side. That will affect the operation. We're just rearranging. So 4A plus 5A. Minus 1 plus 10. See the sign. As it is, minus 1 plus 10 is equal to 180. Now, 4a plus 5a. When you add or subtract like terms, the answer is also a like term. 9a. Minus 1 plus 10 plus 9. Different signs subtract and put the sign of the greater number. Different signs. So subtract. 1 and 10 is 9. And put the sign of the greater number. 10, 10 is greater. So plus 10. Sorry, plus 9. Is equal to 180. At this point, we have simplified the left hand side completely. Nothing more can be done. So now we have to have only that variable term 9a on the left hand side. 
and the num yeah the numbers the constant should be on the other side. So nine a is on the left hand side. Let it remain there. Is equal to one eighty. Is equal to one eighty. One eighty is on the right hand side, so it's going it's just going to be there. Now who is moving? Plus nine a from the left hand side is to be transposed. So it comes to the other side as minus nine. Plus nine to the other side as minus nine. So now nine a is equal to one eighty minus nine is one seventy one. One seventy one. Let me finish it here. Now you will have to because we'll have to find the value of a. So you'll have to separate nine and a. You have to separate nine and a. What's the operation uh, that's between nine and a? Multiplication. So now when you sub, sub, yeah. So when you separate them, it goes to nine goes to the other side with the opposite operation division. So a is equal to one seventy one. See, I'm writing a is equal to one. Who who has to be transposed nine without nine? Write the remaining. Write everything without nine. Nine a is equal to one seventy one, right? Write everything without nine. So this is what it is. A is equal to one seventy one. What's the difference between this and this? Here there is nine. Here there is no nine. Yeah. So write everything without nine. You want to transpose nine, right? So write the remaining part of the equation without nine. So now where what happens to nine? It goes to the other side for division. So a is equal to nine. One's a nine. What's the remainder? Yeah. So nine ones are nine. What's the eight is the remainder? Nine nines are eighty-two. So a is equal to ninety. But is that the uh, final step? No. But we have to find the measures of the two angles. We have only solved for a. We have not found the two angles. So you must write first angle is equal to, or one angle, other angle, whatever language you use. You can say first angle, second angle, or one angle, other angle. So one angle is equal to. Is equal to four a minus one, so that is equal to four into nineteen minus one. Four into nineteen is nine for the thirty six three carried over seventy six minus one seventy five degrees. One angle is seventy five degrees. On the other angle, don't mind. Excuse me, I'll just work it here. So the other angle, other angle is equal to what's the other angle? Five a plus ten. So it is five into nineteen plus ten. What is five into? You can use a bracket because you'll have to do this first. You should not add nineteen and ten. You should. It's four a. Four into nineteen should be done first, and then minus one. You should not do nineteen minus one, eighteen, and then multiply by four. Nineteen, huh? Ninety-five. Ninety-five plus ten, which is hundred and five degrees. Alright, children. No, no, you can check. Yeah, you got your answers right. One hundred and five plus seventy-five is one eighty. I don't. Please homework. Just take the question. Then I think. No, you, no, no. You can just come to the cell, otherwise. Mm -hmm. 
You can sit on that page. Ah, yeah, I think that's good now. Completed? Done? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a line has yeah, read the statements and uh, keep your answer ready. Yeah, a line has infinite length. True or false? True. A ray has two end points. False. You can write the correct statement here. It's not asked. You can write the correct statement. A ray has only one end point. Array has only one endpoint, not two endpoints. So the second statement is false. The first one is true. A line has an infinite length.
Look at the figure. Look at the figure. M and N are two lines cut by two rays forming different angle pairs. M is a line. N is another line. Okay, so we use small letter, small letters of the English alphabet to name lines. An alternate way of naming lines is taking two points and then using capital letters because a point is always named using a capital letter. So you have two ways of naming lines. If you want to use a single letter, you must use a single lowercase English alphabet. If you want to use two letters, then you'll have to mark two points on the line. And since a point is always named using a capital letter, You'll have to mark the names using capital letters and then it is line AB. So like this line AB or line, if it is line A, you cannot use this. You cannot write line A like this, not normally. Written. So line A, here in this case, line M. If you want to use a single letter, small letter, two letters, capital letters. So line M, line N. And then there are two rays. Which are the rays? So this is one ray. This is one ray. Can you see the ray? And this is the other ray. This is the other ray. So because of this uh, arrangement of uh, these two lines and uh, Okay, so because of this arrangement, uh, we have uh, different pairs of angles formed. Uh, you have to name four linear pairs of angles. Okay, so let's read the question again. See, reading the question helps you to express, or if this diagram is given, you know how to explain the diagram. So for that reason, it's important to read the question. Okay, M and N are two lines cut by two rays forming different angle pairs. Name any four linear pairs of angles. Yeah. Tell me. To identify linear pairs of angles, identify a straight line and see like, uh, say M is a straight line and you should identify a ray on it. And then you must say this angle and this angle form a linear pair. Requirement, requirement for linear pair is straight line and a ray on it. That's all. Then those two angles. It will be 180. Hmm. Correct. Yeah, tell me, tell me the pairs, linear pairs. This is the line. Okay. See, line M. And we see the small ray on it. Can you see angle 1 and angle 2 here? Angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. Okay. Then. 
the same line M, same line M. Can you see a line like this below? Okay. So this is three and four. This is angle three and four. This angle, so these two angles together and this angle. Four and five don't form a linear pair. Four and five, they don't form a linear pair. Yeah, three, four, five. Yeah, on N, on N, we have a ray like this, and there is seven here and six here. On N, we have a ray like this, and we have 12 here and 10 here. And on N, we have a ray like this, and we on N, and we have 8 and 9 here. So since they're asking for, you can go with this 1, 2, 3, and 4. Observe. I'm just uh, like, you know, breaking down the figure into smaller figures. I have not draw, drawn or mentioned anything extra. I have just broken down uh, the figure into smaller figures. Maybe now I will I'll just draw it once again. See. Line M. Okay. Okay. Time park would have there. Go to park. Line M. Okay. Okay. Can you see this line? which is called a ray. Yes. Then what are the angles you see here and here? The numbers. What are the numbers? No, Tanya has lost focus. Nah, I'm observing that for quite some time. She's thinking about the Friday's match portions. What are the match portions? Lines and angles are in the test. And she's working fractions and decimals in her mind. Physically, she's present. Mentally, she's somewhere else. Ray is not ready to do the sentence. Yes, Tanya, you should answer this. Tell me the numbers. One and two. Okay. Your guess is right. You thought one and two, so you're right. Then let me take N line N. Okay. Tell me the numbers. Tell me the angles. 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Now the same line N. They are found in different places. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 6 and 7. 6 and 7. Line N. Eight and nine. So everywhere you see uh, there's a straight line and a ray on it. Then the two angles on either sides of the ray form a linear pair. You must identify the straight line. Here we have two straight lines, M and N. So look at the, continue the straight line and a ray on the straight line. And the two angles formed are called linear pair of angles. So we'll have to uh, mark four. So you can, you can see your angle one and angle two, 10 and 12, six and seven, eight and nine. You get it? So angle, angle one and angle two, angle 10 and angle 12, angle uh, six and angle seven, Angle eight and angle nine. All right. You okay, write on the question completely first. Let me see you. Should we? Yeah, you have to.
Angelin. Yeah, you should not just write that uh, uh, final answer like angle one and angle two. You should also show the uh, figure, the the four figures which I have shown here. Yeah, show your book. Look, just the last answer which is just taken down. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, this is homework. I'll send the image. Yes. No, I know. I'm sending it on notes. Okay, this is homework, but we'll just discuss uh, this answer. Uh, so, well, so what do you remember about uh, vertically opposite angles? Are vertically op okay? Let me first check if you remember how to identify vertically opposite angles. When are two vertically opposite angles formed? Correct. So when two lines, yeah, I saw. Not, no, not that. So vertically opposite angles are formed when two lines intersect at a point. So line L, line P, they intersect at this point O. 
when two lines intersect vertically opposite angles are formed. Now in this figure, four angles are formed around O. Four angles are formed around the point O. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. Four angles are formed around this point O. Angle one and angle three are vertically opposite angles. Angle two and angle four are vertically opposite angles. And vertically opposite angles are equal. Vertically opposite angles are equal. So if the measure of angle one is 40 degrees, the measure of angle three is also 40 degrees. Vertically opposite angles are equal in measure. Now, one and two form a linear pair. Why? Because line L and there is a ray and you see angle one here and two here. No nodding here simply. Okay. Yeah. Now angle one plus angle two is equal to 180 because L is a straight line. And we see a ray on it. OK, we see a ray on it. And the two angles are angle one and angle two. Angle one is 40 degrees. So angle two will be angle two will be 140 degrees because linear pair of angles are supplementary. It will be 140. Now we found angle two. So the measure of angle four also will be 140 degrees because vertically opposite angles are equal. Vertically opposite angles are formed when two lines intersect at a point. That's the first thing. Now there will be four angles formed around that point. Here that point is O. The lines are L and P. Line L and line P, they meet at point O. Four angles are formed around O. We have numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4. Angle 1 and angle 3 in this figure are vertically opposite angles and they are equal. Vertically opposite angles are always equal. Also, two and four are vertically opposite angles and they are equal. Now, we are given the measure of angle one. Angle one measures 40 degrees is given to you. Okay. With the help of this, you can find the remaining three angles. There are four angles in all. If nothing is given, you cannot find anything. But if one angle is given, you can find all the three angles, the other three angles. So one angle, that is angle one is given to be 40 degrees. Now first, angle one is equal to angle three because vertically opposite angles are equal. So angle three is also 40 degrees. So we found one angle, okay? Now in all, we know two angles. Now we have two more angles to find, angle two and angle four. Now, I've taken this line L, I've identified the ray on it, and I see that angle one and angle two form a linear pair because they stand on this line. This is the line, line L and ray. Angle one plus uh, angle one and angle two form a linear pair. Now I know angle one is 40 degrees. And if they form a linear pair, that means they're supplementary. So if this is 40, this has to be 180 minus 40, 140 degrees. 180 minus 40, 140 degrees. So we found angle two, 140 degrees. Now angle 2 and angle 4 are vertically opposite angles. So angle 4 is also 140 degrees. See here. Two lines. They need not be like an X like this. It can be like, like this also. See here. These are also vertically opposite. Two lines must meet. When two lines meet, they need not always form an X formation like this. Like a perfect X. OK, so it can be like this also, like, like this and like this. So two lines, these are two lines. These are two lines and they intersect at this point.
So I was saying one line, another line. They cut each other like this. Okay. So now vertically opposite angles are formed. This is the point where they meet or intersect. This is called the point of intersection. One, two, three, four angles are formed. That's marked angle A, angle B, angle C, angle D. Angle A is equal to angle C. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Angle B is equal to angle D. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Now, supposing we know the measure of angle A, 130 degrees. With this, you can find all the measures. The measures of all the uh, three angles. Angle A is 130 degrees. Now, which is the angle opposite to angle A? Angle A and angle C are vertically opposite, right? So if angle A is equal to 130 degrees, angle C is equal to 130 degrees because vertically opposite angles are equal. Or you can even write it like this. Angle A is equal to angle C, vertically opposite angles. Angle A is equal to angle C. Reason, vertically opposite angles. Therefore, angle C is equal to 130 degrees. Correct? All right. Now, uh, take a, draw a portion of this figure where you can use the property of linear pair. Draw a portion of this figure where you can use the property of linear pair. So, say you draw this portion. Which portion? Supposing you draw this portion. Okay. So, now, now, when I'm going to copy them, I'm going to copy them. The path 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 line path 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 yeah, so angle A plus angle D, angle A plus angle D is equal to 180. Why? Linear pair. Linear pair. Correct? So angle A is how much? 130. 130 plus angle D is equal to 180. So angle D is equal to 180. Now you know minus 130. 40. Minus 130. So angle D is equal to 50 degrees. Correct. So like this, we found D. D is 50 degrees. Now after finding D, you can find B because D and B are vertically opposite angles. Right? D and B are vertically opposite angles. So angle D is equal to this is the first part. This is second part. I'll do the third part here. So angle D is equal to angle B. Reason, vertically opposite angles. So D is one, uh, sorry, D is 50 degrees. So angle B is also 50 degrees. So this is how you find uh, all the angles when one angle is given in a situation like this. What's the situation? Two lines intersect at a point. When two lines intersect at a point, four angles are formed. And when one of the angles is given to you, you can find the other three angles using the property of vertically opposite angles and the linear pair. And linear. Yeah, please uh, draw this figure. This is the question. This is the question figure. Don't, don't, not this one. Don't take this one. Not that. Okay. This is the question. This is the question. What was the number? What's the number? Fourth one. Huh? This is the fourth one, is it? Okay, fourth one. Okay, okay. So what are the number? Okay, so and this is the question. Ah, uh, yeah. And the question is find the value, find the uh, uh, values of A, B, C, and D. Sorry, B, C, and D. This is the question. Find angle D. Angle C, angle D.
Yeah. So now this is your homework. Because uh, there's a question similar to what we just understood here. So to enable you to answer this question, I thought I'll just give you an example. OK, so now I've shared this image. With you, this is also an assignment. See, it's not about uh, you know uh, solving from exceed or solving from artificial or concepts should be understood clearly. Then you can handle questions from any book. So don't. This should not be a concern that I'm not seeing any NCRT question or I'm not seeing any RS level question. It's not any. It's not any favoritism or something by work exceed. I know certain chapters are really very good. Now lines and angles and the next chapter triangles. You know they have really good questions. So I'll be using the, uh, you know, uh, uh, exceed uh, chapters for lines, angles, and triangles. Questions are really good. So the criteria for selecting is this, and not because somebody is using this book so for their sake. It's not for anyone's sake. <laughs> lines A and B. So this is line A. This is line B. Two lines A and B intersect at a point, intersect at this point. What are the measures of angle one and angle two? Yeah. What's the measure of angle one? Correct, 65 degrees. What's the measure of angle 2? 115 degrees. Because 65 and angle 1, vertically opposite angles, they equal. Uh, 2 and 115, vertically opposite angles, they equal. Correct. Right? right? Yeah, yeah, now, yes. Now I'll present the answer. Yes, you have to. Yes. Done, Tatakshi? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, 
हरी संतोष यू कैन टेक इट फ्रॉम योर टेक्स ओके मेक इट फास्ट या Okay. Yeah. The sum of supplementary angles is a typing error. It's one eighty degrees. The sum of supplementary angles is one eighty degrees. True or false? True. Complementary angles may be non-adjacent. Complementary angles meaning. Uh, two angles for sum is ninety degrees. Complementary angles may be non-adjacent. Yeah, two angles are complementary angles can be non-adjacent. True, true. Yeah, they can be non-adjacent. True. Now, if you take this triangle, see it's a right triangle. Okay, okay. Just take this triangle. Say this is thirty degrees and the sixty degrees. Now these two angles are complementary angles, thirty plus sixty, ninety, but they are not adjacent angles. True. We have started eight cent portions. You're coming up to one year. <laughs>
Sorry. Correct. करेक्ट सो एंगल एंगल आर ओ एस is equal to angle p q p o u why vertically opposite angle they should be opposite to each other correct i'll show you therefore No, oh, that's different. We'll see this one. So, and therefore, angle P O U is equal to sixty-one degrees. See, it's easy to identify. I'll tell you. See here. Mm. <clears throat> this here. No, I think I'll just tell you with the help of this figure. See. Now, this is R O S, right? And this is P O U. This is P O U. Can you see? Uh, this is the arm of uh, this one. Is the arm of this angle, and this is the arm of this angle. And these two arms make one straight line. This is the arm. of the angle and this is the arm of this angle when you identify vertically opposite angles when you identify vertically opposite angles there are two angles right so four arms one arm of one angle and another arm of the second angle together will be the straight line will be one straight line let me will do it slowly see two angle each angle has two arms two angles each angle has two arms okay one arm of the first angle and any any arm of the first angle and any arm one arm, one arm of the second angle together will make one straight line the other arm of that first angle and that other arm of the second angle together will make a straight line that means you have identified vertically opposite angles correctly if you can see that you have identified the vertically opposite angles correctly now see here this arm of the first angle see these are the two arm these are the two arms of the first angle and these are the two arms of the second angle correct correct okay now see here look at the board this arm of the first angle and this arm of the second angle together is a straight line and the other arm of the first angle and the other arm of the second angle together they make a straight line then you have identified the vertically opposite angles correctly
Yeah. Hmm? Ali? Otherwise, they'll form broken lines. Now, supposing you identify, identify this angle and this angle as vertically opposite angles. Okay. Supposing you identify these two angles as vertically opposite angles. So, this arm of the first angle and this arm of the second angle, they form a straight line. But this arm of the first angle and this arm of the second angle, they don't form a straight line. It's a broken line. So you have not identified the vertically opposite angles correctly. All right. I think we'll stop with this for today's class. What's the time? Yeah. Because you need to refresh, you know, this will take some time to understand, so we'll do it in the next clips. Okay. Yeah, remind me, uh, we'll do this in the next class. I think we can continue. These are simple. It will not tax your brain, I mean. These are easy. Now let's answer this. Find the supplement of find the supplement of an angle of 44 degrees. So these are the options. These are the options. Find the supplement. Find the supplement of an angle of 44 degrees. Which is the correct answer? A, B, C, or D? A. A. Because 44. 180. 44 plus. 136 is equal to We'll go. One second. Where's the figure? Oh, I've forgotten to put the figure here. The question says in the figure. I don't have the figure. Sorry. No, no, I mean. Yeah. Answer this one. What is the measure of the unknown angle in each figure? In the first figure, what's the measure of? What's the measure of this angle? 180 degrees. Because AOB is a straight line. So the angle in the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. Yeah. What's the measure of this angle? This portion. What's the measure of this angle? Okay. Now name name the two angles or name all the three angles you see in this figure. No. Correct. 27 degrees is the right answer. No, answer this question. Name all the three angles you see in this figure. No, no, not, not the magnitude. The names of the three angles. No, not like that. Like angle ABC, angle XYZ. Where is all? I'm talking about the second figure. Second figure. Angle ABC. C 
ABC. These are the three angles in this figure, right? Now, what's the measure of angle ABC? 90 degrees. How do we know? Because it's marked like this. Any angle marked like this is equal to 190. Now, you should not mistake this one to be 63 degrees. Yeah, that's from 63. That's 90. Okay, then uh, what's the measure of angle ABD? No, any originally not given. Okay, angle DBC? 63 degrees. Now you, uh, you're all right in finding this angle. 90 minus 63, 27 degrees, the correct answer. Answer this question. Of these three angles, which are the two adjacent angles? Or do you find adjacent angles in this figure? Common vertex, common arm, non-common arms, opposite side of the common arm. Name the two adjacent angles. Name the two angles, adjacent angles. Correct. ABD and DBC. Angle ABD, angle ABD, and angle DBC. ABD, DBC. They are adjacent angles. Why? Because they have a common vertex B. Common B. vertex B. Common arm? B. B, D. Very good. And which are the non common arms? A, B. This is? B, C. Yeah, A, B, and B, C. These are the non common arms. And where do they lie? They lie on either sides of the common arm. One lies to the side, and one lies somewhere below. They lie on at the opposite sides of the common arm. Either sides of the common arm. So angle ABD, angle ABD and DBC are adjacent angles because they have a common vertex B, common arm BD, and the non common arms uh, BA and BC are on either sides of the common arm BD. All right. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. See you.